Good day everyone, this is Sir Fred and welcome to another video lesson tutorial. For our discussion for today, I'm going to discuss measures of position for group data part 2. Let's get to know first the following objectives. At the end of the lesson, the learners are expected to illustrate the following measures of position for group data, quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. And number two, compute for quartiles, deciles, and percentiles for group data. At this moment, I'm going to discuss measures of position for group data, particularly the decile. Here are the steps that we need to follow in solving for decile for group data. First is for us to construct the cumulative frequency. Second, decide the class that contains D sub K. When we say D sub K class, it is a class with a value of cumulative frequency greater than or equal to k times n all over 10. And finally, compute for the decile of group data. To compute for decile of group data, we use the formula d sub k is equal to l d sub k plus the quantity k times n all over 10 minus cfb all over f d sub k times i, wherein l d sub k is the lower boundary of the d sub k class, cfb is the cumulative frequency of the class before the decile class, n stands for the number of cases or the total number of frequency, F D sub K is the frequency of the decile class. I is the size of the class interval. K is the nth decile. We are going to use this formula in solving for decile for group data shown in the next slides. Let us take a look at this example. The table shows the scores of 50 students in a chapter test. Calculate for D sub 8 and D sub 3. In our table, shows the scores shown in different class interval and their corresponding frequencies. As what you can see class, this example is used in solving for quartiles for group data. So just like what we did in our previous video lesson, we are going to compute for the lower boundary and the cumulative frequency of each class interval. So beginning with the lower boundary. As we all know, to compute for the lower boundary of each class, we are going to subtract 0 0.5 in the lower limit of each class. And that is 16 minus 0 0.5 results to 15.5. Follow the same procedure on the succeeding classes until you reach 46 to 50 class interval and that is 45.5. Afterwards is for us to complete the table for the cumulative frequency. As we all know, we always begin in the lowest class until you reach the uppermost class. So we have 15.5. The frequency of that will be capped on the cumulative frequency and that is 2. So add this to the frequency of the next class and that is equal to 4. Follow the same procedure until you reach the uppermost class. Make sure that the uppermost class has a cumulative frequency which is equal to the total number of frequency. To solve for the D sub 8 class, we are going to use the formula K times N all over 10. 
and that is equal to 8 times 50 divided by 4. So the value of the D sub 8 class is equal to 40. After we have identified the D sub 8 class, we are going to locate the position of this in our less than cumulative frequency. Make sure that the value of the less than cumulative frequency must be greater than or equal to the value of the D sub 8 class. And that is from 41 to 45. Since we have identified the D sub 8 class, so what are we going to do is to identify the values in our formula for decile. First is the cumulative frequency less than or before the D sub 8 class and that is equal to 33. Next is the lower boundary of the D sub 8 class and that is equal to 40. Next is the frequency of the D sub 8 class and that is equal to 12. And finally, the total number of class interval or class width is equal to 5. Substituting the values in our formula, D sub 8 is equal to 40.5 plus the quantity 40 minus 33 divided by 12 times 5. Simplifying our expression lead us to the answer D sub 8 is equal to 43.417. So therefore, the approximate value of our D sub 8 is equal to 43.417. And for the value of our D sub 3, so we begin solving by finding the value of the D sub 3 class by using the formula K times N divided by 10 results to 3 times 50 divided by 10 that results to 15. So the value of our D sub 3 class is equal to 15. Locate the position of our D sub 3 class in our less than cumulative frequency. So make sure that the value of our less than cumulative frequency is greater than or equal to the value of the D sub 3 class and that is from 31 to 35. Since we have identified the value of our D sub 3 class, time for us to identify the values of our formula beginning with the cumulative frequency before the D sub 3 class and that is equal to 10. Next is the lower boundary of our D sub 3 class and that is equal to 30.5. The frequency of our D sub 3 class is equal to 14. And finally, our class interval is equal to 5. Substituting the values in our formula leads us to D sub 3 is equal to 30.5 plus the quantity 15 minus 10 divided by 14 times 5. Simplifying the expression leads us to the value of our D sub 3 and that is equal to 32.285. So therefore, the approximate value of our third decile in a group data is equal to 32.285. To summarize the things that we have learned about finding the measures of position for group data, particularly the decile, here are the following steps. So first, we are required to construct the cumulative frequency. Second, decide the class that contains D sub K by means of the formula k times n all over 10, and finally, compute for the decile of group data. In this presentation, shows the formula for decile for group data. 
So, D sub K is equal to the quantity L D sub K plus the quantity K times N all over 10 minus C F sub B all over F D sub K times I. Where L D sub K is the lower boundary in the D sub K class. C F sub B is the cumulative frequency of the class before the decile class. N is the number of cases or frequency. F D sub K is the frequency of the decile class. I is the size of the class interval. And K is the nth decile. And by that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the subscription box and notification bell to stay updated. See you on our next video lesson. Goodbye class!